Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying the sheaves. Praying on this land, we acknowledge the Naranga people, traditional custodians upon whose ancestral lands we meet, and pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of Aboriginal people to country. Well, good morning and welcome to worship with the Anglicans on the York Peninsula. Today we are celebrating the fifth Sunday in Lent. It's a time of um, perhaps a little deeper reflection as we move towards the uh, great finale of Holy Week and Good Friday and then the Resurrection and Easter. Our service follows our standard pattern. Uh, the parts in yellow are congregational responses and you may join in in the singing. So sit back, relax and enjoy your time with God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. sent to heal the contrite of heart Kyrie Father, 
to intercede for us, to intercede for us. Here he is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in the newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together the Trisagion. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Let us pray. Christ, whose feet were caressed with perfume and a woman's hair, you humbly took a basin and towel and washed the feet of your friends. Wash us also in your tenderness, that embracing your service freely, we may accept no other bondage in your name. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 43, beginning at verse 16. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old, I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honour me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. for all. 
Paul to the Philippians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 3. For it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the Spirit of God, and boast in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh, even though I, too, have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisees, as to zeal a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this 
or have already reached the goal. But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this is one thing I do. Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All I am is all I have And all, all I have to give And I give it all to you It's my fragrant oil It's my costly perfume I take my alabaster box and I, I break it open. Let the fragrance arise. La 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 la. la. Let the fragrance arise. La la la. And I pour it out 
A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John Chapter 12 beginning at verse 1 Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for three hundred denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, and he kept the common purse, and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it, so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. For the Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. I want to take you to the circumstances of the Gospel reading. Um, it has a time on it, it's six days before the Passover, so this would have been um, preparing then for Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. And um, Jesus was at Bethany and um, he was on the way to the cross. The Passover would be um, his last. He would share it with his, his um, small circle, his disciples and the uh, other people that were there. Um, in in the upper room, and that story is something that we can look look forward to next week. But here Jesus finds himself calling in on Lazarus. Now Lazarus had um, been the recipient of one of his miracles. Lazarus was raised from the dead, and his sisters Mary and Martha appear in um, occasionally in the story. Obviously, they were close to him and we find Martha serving and if you recall the Mary Martha story in Luke you'll understand that that was what Mar who Martha was. She was the person who served at table. Mary was the spiritual one. She sat at Jesus' feet when he'd been there before and taught and now she responded to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and took the most precious thing she had she had a pound of pure nard, and um, that was an extremely expensive perfume. And that perfume she was prepared to offer to Jesus uh, to anoint him. Whether she knew it was exactly about his burial, uh, I don't know. I don't think that even at this late stage, the disciples had any clue as to what really was going to happen. I don't know if they expected that God was going to just sort of send down angels or, or whatever it was. But um, it did turn out to be for her, uh, for his burial, that would come within five days. Now she not only uh, used the nard uh, to anoint Jesus and uh, the the anointing of um, dead bodies with spices, partly to avoid the, the smell, but partly as a sort of an honouring um, of activity, um, she did. But she wiped her f his feet with her hair. 
And um, it was an act of pure love. And it contrasts so much to the act of Judas, which was an act of pure greed. <coughs> Mary's love, and let's take the image there. The fragrance of the perfume filled the atmosphere. And if we are engaged in acts of love to others, then this is the, the same sort of thing. The atmosphere of love that you find amongst um, the committed Christians who are devoted to doing God's will will pervade the whole atmosphere. And it's very difficult for people to, to react badly to it. But let's, let's um, look at Judas for a minute. Judas, well... Was he caring for the poor, or as John suggests, that he um, wanted to dip into the purse to take out something and 300 denarii? And you know, let's let's just sort of get an idea of what that was. 300 denarii was a year's wage. What's a year's wage now? 80,000? 80,000 dollars is a tremendous amount, and that's what they could have sold the perfume for. And um, well, there's two sorts of things. One is um, this sort of sense of um, Judas wanted to justify himself. So he said, we could sell it and give the money to the poor. Remember, Jesus had in his hearing already told the rich young ruler that, you know, sell all you have and give it to the poor and then come follow me. So this idea of selling and giving to the poor was not an unusual one. But Jesus points him to a higher purpose. Mary responded to prompting the Holy Spirit, we hope. And she responded to be part of the process that Jesus would be going through towards his death. And ultimately towards his resurrection and our redemption. Mary had heard God and responded and engaged in the ministry that was hers, the ministry of love to others. Would that we had more Marys in our congregations that were so concerned with loving others that nothing was too much. And Judas, in all this, wanted to divert her. You can take many lessons from that, but I just want to perhaps take one. When Judas sought to divert her, it's like often when we're engaged in ministry, you'll always find someone who will criticise. I know I've heard someone say, well, criticism is my spiritual gift. But it's not. It's an arrogance. It's an arrogance that I know better. And often it is thrown up against those who are seeking to do God's will. And if you seek to do God's will, don't be, f be afraid because you will find opposition. Because there are others who want other things to happen. Judas, we find four days later, betraying Jesus to the powers that would have him out of the way. He actually continued to do God's will, even though he didn't want to. And he's remembered for that. Now, John gives us this little image, and there's a glimpse in one of the other Gospels, which says, you know, and this will be told to all generations. And of course, it's recorded in each of the Gospels. And Mary's name is remembered for this one act of love. What are you going to be remembered for at the end of your Christian journey? Are you going to be remembered for the criticism that you had of God's people? It really is interesting. Um, 
people feel that they have the right to advise God's people, but not only that, but also uh, to advise God, really. I know that um, even here we have the interesting experience that no matter what we do, there's always someone who's got a better suggestion. And it's not that I don't believe in working with teamwork. But sometimes what I do is what God wants me to do. And I am convicted that that is it. And the people who wish to tell me, um, oh, you should do this or you should do that. Perhaps I'd be a little more concerned with their opinion if I believed that they were actually concentrating on hearing God. But more often than not, as you step back, they have their own hidden agenda. So we can choose to be someone in the story. Certainly we can be the Jesus figure and receive the love of others. And, and that is actually a challenge for us sometimes. Often people are more willing to give than to receive. Or we can be the Mary figure, acting out of love, bringing love, God's love, to others. Or we can choose to do what Judas did, pursuing our own agenda. And yeah, what that wonderful thing is, Christianizing it, making it righteous. Oh, we could use the money for the poor. Not really his priority, but that was the priority that sounded good. So as we think of this wonderful story, and I think it is such a wonderful story, where are we in the story? Let us take a moment to pray and to think about ourselves in the light of God's word. Amen. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We, we believe, believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through his cross. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. A prayer for our diocese. God of hope and love, you have called us to be the body of Christ. Inspire us in the Diocese of Loughborough to worship with joy and energy, serve with compassion and be welcoming of others in our communities so that we all know the good news of Jesus to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory forever. Amen. Although we are not worthy to ask, Father, you are always ready to hear our prayers. We respond to the bidding, sinless one, 
with Lord hear our prayer. Nearing the end of our Lenten journey, may we be mindful of those parts of our lives that alienate us from your love. Teach us to hear your voice and respond to your prompting. Sinless one, Lord, hear our prayer. Like your disciples, we say, teach us to pray. Show us those things that hinder our prayers. Show us those for whom we should pray, those who are on our hearts. Teach us to love others as you love them and to uphold them in prayer, sinless one. Lord, hear our prayer. May we fast with joy, casting aside those things that weigh us down. Help us to review our lives, to see those things that we can give up. Teach us to live more simply, that others may simply live. Sinless One, Lord, hear our prayer. It is easy, Lord, to only see what we give and not how we, not what we keep. As you gave your Son, that we might live, show us the things that we can give for you. Teach us to be generous in response to all you have given us and to give sacrificially in your name. Sinless one, Lord, hear our prayer. For people and places that need our prayers and for the work of the church, let your will be done. Sinless One, hear our prayer. Father, draw us close to you and hear our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His Spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. For glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. He was tempted in every way as we are, yet he did not sin. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and attained an eternal deliverance for his people. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and walk in the way of love. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. And again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trouble, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ and the blood of Christ. Can I have you all stand one more time?
strength is failing The end draws near And my time has come Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand years and then forever to others and be a sign of your broken your wholeness in this broken world. Christ our Saviour draw you to himself that you may find in him crucified a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope and the assurance of sin forgiven. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit Rest upon you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
In the name of Christ. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high Lord, I love to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life 